Okay, so back to where I began, uh, capitalist reality. Uh, so, as Yasmina already, she's not here any longer, tackled um, or opened up the question this morning is, uh, what is the motivation to speak about uh, socialist uh, realism at all today? Uh, and what does it mean to articulate uh, the socialist um, realism uh, just uh, through artistic or academic uh, articulation? Um, and what is the position of uh, such East art in the global um, art market? I think we have to bear these uh, questions in mind while uh, we are talking about uh, socialist realism, um, which I think we somehow missed this morning um, at all. So, um, and also, um, to paraphrase Horkheimer, uh, I could say whoever is not prepared to talk about capitalism should also remain silent about uh, socialist, um, uh, uh, socialist realism. Why do I say that? Uh, because um, what also lacks was um, um, any uh, mention at all of a socialist project as such. And uh, looking uh, from uh, from nowadays back to socialist realism without um, any context, without the, the socialist project which stood behind all of these works, and especially uh, which uh, uh, stood behind monumental uh, works, um, is um, actually, I would say, misleading uh, in a certain sense. Uh, so, um, this international conference bears title Art That Changes the World. And I guess I'm going to speak uh, of, through our practice of um, art that changes the world in a roundabout way or uh, rather reversed. I'm going to talk about world that changes the art or world that changes uh, 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 itself and then changes the, the, the art with it. I'm here representing uh, a collective work, being a member of a curatorial collective uh, block, which acts at the intersection between art, cultural work, urbanism, and political activism. So, um, uh, let me first uh, describe, so I will start with two recent um, interventions, which will then uh, be used as starting point for opening up some questions about the um, world that changes the art or art that changes the world. So the first one uh, is uh, intervention uh, was named Križevčanka and we did it uh, together uh, in collaboration with uh, an artist Selma Banić in Križevci which is a small town uh, in um, once industrial town in central Croatia. So, uh, the intervention Križevčanka uh, is to be read as a comment on the processes that uh, shape the present day town of Križevci. Starting point of the intervention has been taken from the history of the town and, um, in fact, uh, women's history of Križevci. Uh, Križevčanka also means, uh, in Croatian, a woman from uh, Križevci. Uh, namely, town history in all its materials and self-representation uh, uh, celebrates Magda Herutsina. Magda Herutsina was a woman who managed uh, to avoid uh, execution uh, due to the political decision of, um, the, of the, uh, that time uh, Empress Maria Teresa from the House of Habsburg, so in the 18th century. So, um, but... Um, um, as we at least know from the book of uh, Silvia Federici um, under the title Caliban and the Witch, um, so uh, witch hunt was, um, which she doesn't read from the anthropological perspective, but uh, from the economical one. Uh, seeing is at the uh, phase of the um, uh, primitive accumulation of capital. Uh, at the period of, of the early modern time, ascent of capitalism, so as a, as a move to uh, subvert um, the rising tide of communalism 
and uh, as a methodological subjugation of women and the appropriation of their labor, but also uh, their property, but also their knowledge. And uh, these processes we can uh, now even recognize and uh, it's um, through the theory of commons um, called uh, enclosures. Uh, so, starting from this uh, historical uh, episode, uh, we, uh, we asked following questions. Uh, what are the modern or contemporary riches of Križevci and where are they uh, to be found? What are the magnets of today? And what are the contemporary mechanisms that deprive them of uh, their uh, social and economic rights? Taking away their common property and common spaces and economic rights and um, which are dispossessing them of... Uh, uh. So, um, these questions we seek to answer um, uh, researching uh, in the urban space of uh, Križevci, where we have found traces of uh, brutal de-industrialization. I said at the very beginning, Križevci was once an industrial town. So, this title, uh, in the second step, also refers uh, to, uh, directly to the name of... Uh, of uh, an ex factory, a meat factory actually, which was privatized uh, or extinguished actually in the process of privatization. It was closed together with the other factories that uh, defined this once industrial town. Also, as we know again from the history, it was the industri industrialization that brought women, these dispossessed women, uh, to the towns where they entered the wage labor. Uh, uh, and uh, out of the research of um, the state of uh, women's unemployment and uh, income in Križevci, together with the history of witch hunt, we made a series of leaflets, which looked like this. I, I see, I guess, I, don't, I can see it from this angle, but I guess, so these are really like do-it-yourself um, leaflets, which bring uh, some facts around income, state of unemployment of... Uh, so, parallel to this uh, action, so the leaflets were spread all, all, all over the, uh, the town, uh, we also installed... Um, installed, uh, found work clothing of workers' uniforms, uh, which we found in the, uh, in the factory uh, Križevčanka, which is now abandoned and is waiting for the privatization together with the whole infrastructure and uh, land. And uh, we have installed it on the main square. Uh, the very locus of the intervention is also chosen um, because of the fact that uh, at the time of the privatization of the factory, and uh, which was the, the final point of the deindustrialization of the whole city, uh, the city uh, government decided to, um, uh, to, to, um, to do a beautification of uh, the main square. You, you can't see it. No. I'm really sorry, this is embarrassing for me as well, but I don't know how to... This is how it looked like, finally. Maybe, Thank you. And you can yeah. move there. So this is like workers' uniforms which were put as a provisional installation uh, on, on the main uh, square. So once beloved and very used main square, which had a lot of trees before being beautified and completely uh, uh, emptied of, uh, of any um, uh, possibility to, uh, to use it, because trees were used uh, to hide from the sun, you can go there during the night to do whatever and things like that. So, um, this is the first case. Uh, the second one, um, the second intervention, we named Ship Equaled City. Again, action in public space, uh, part of the same program that uh, Liz, uh, Luisa presented. So it is pilots a program of Museum of Modern Art and um, Contemporary Art of Rijeka, uh, which uh, wanted somehow to explore um, its spatial context, so to say, its immediate urban environment. So they opened the call, um, calling for um, art practices in public spaces beyond monumental sculpture. 
So, um, regarding the proposition of this call, uh, uh, we have decided to use this action to perform a kind of monument, let's say, uh, to the uh, day of uh, Rijeka's liberation from the uh, fascist occupation, which is the 3rd of May. And also the 3rd of May is the date after the shipyard um, was named also, Trechi Mai, 3rd of May. Also, as a part of foundation of Yugoslavia, uh, not just in uh, national liberation struggle, but also in the socialist project I mentioned at the very beginning. So, um, what we wanted to do is to draw uh, public attention uh, to the place, the role and the importance of shipbuilding industry um, for the city of Rijeka. Um, these um, textual uh, visual messages, which we produced together with the vi vi various activists, journalists, uh, workers, uh, unions, anarcho-syndicalists and artists, emphasize the fact that uh, shipbuilding uh, industry was, had, has had uh, crucial implications uh, for, for the city as a whole. So directly or indirectly, it wasn't just about producing and bringing income back to the city and um, building it, but also about the whole reproduction of, uh, of uh, everyday life of the workers with lots of uh, workers, cultural clubs, uh, et, et cetera. So that's why we uh, put it in the formula uh, which uh, equals ship, uh, ship with the city. So entire city builds the ship while the ship builds uh, the city back. Uh, again, the location was also intentionally um, chosen. You see the logo of uh, Erste Bank. So um, we also started um, by, uh, it was also a, a social center of Rijeka in uh, terms of gathering of youths and uh, people but as well uh, the place where the central building of Bank of Rijeka uh, once was be before um, it was uh, bought by Erstem. And uh, what the Bank of Rijeka meant for the city as well as for the uh, um, uh, ship building industry before uh, its privatization. So we have used uh, the, um, the bank's former building as a surface for projections um, of uh, the messages Visuals. This is the famous key, uh, which was a logo of Riečka Banka, which is still to be found here, no matter the uh, privatization. Um, okay. So uh, these were two, uh, these two interventions, two recent interventions I wanted to show. And let me now finally come to the point of our departure, which is the title art that changes the world. We can agree seeing these uh, two examples that take at, uh, at least take political agenda or they try somehow to articulate or reveal some socio-economical issues through artistic means. It is nothing new in the field, at least since 1990s, parallel to the dissolution of the Soviet state and the Eastern Bloc and the collapse of the welfare state on the West, proliferation of such practices uh, takes place. But instead of reading it as a um, consequence of uh, liberalization or democratization of the field, I think one needs to put it in its uh, historical context. And uh, the fact that uh, contemporary art practices explicitly take on political uh, agendas is actually due to uh, the disappearance or weakening of real political forces that could implement them, such as left parties, unions, and the like. The collateral effect of such a development is that the contemporary art treatment of political questions is actually without support of real political movements. This should be, I guess, the starting point to think uh, of relations between art and politics. In his essay on um, art activism, Boris Groys states that artist activists want to change the world, remember now the title of uh, this conference, through artistic means, 
so not the art system, but the reality itself. He writes, Art activists do not want to merely criticize the art system or the general political and social conditions under which this system functions. Rather, they want to change these conditions by means of art, not so much inside the art system, but outside it, in reality itself. Uh, end of the quote. Uh, so, uh, furthermore, in the text, he also states that an artist activist wants to make art useful, so in bringing uh, short-term solutions, but by doing that, an artist activist does not want to cease being an artist. I guess this diagnosis is uh, true, I can agree with it, but I think one has to take one step further and not to rely only on the will of artists and uh, look at this development again from a historical perspective I just mentioned. It is not because he or she does not want to stay or want to stay artist, it is because there is no force to align to. In comparison to the avant-garde, which I think in the framework of this project, however tacitly, is put, and this could stay open for the discussion, as the example of political art. So this uh, avant-garde, which has had a communist party, uh, um, Soviet avant-garde artists had support of Soviet government, and in comparison to that, contemporary art does not have a political support. Or rather, we don't have any reasons to believe in political support. So, how to act in this rather depressing constellation? How to politicize art field while having no political um, forces on the horizon? And on the other hand, um, with some inherent um, development in the art field itself, uh, and with this growing naturalization of uh, self-perception of art as a practice that is inherently political, because it is, whatever, autonomous, it somehow is conceived as a privileged locus of intervention, knowledge production, or whatever. So, um, while shaping these uh, interventions, we have had all this uh, in mind, and uh, we tried to approach this process from a back. So, without patronizing or showing that only through artistic means we can articulate the socio-economic processes at stake, but relativizing the privileged position of artist or curator, no matter. So, collaboration with different actors, unions, activists, journalists, could politicize us as producer, and hopefully make the urgent need to organize finally visible. I haven't uh, also, and I don't have the time in this short presentation to go, uh, what does it mean to bring all these actors into the production? But I can just uh, briefly uh, name uh, what does it mean. Uh, so this means bringing in the, them into the production process itself, with, uh, in negotiation with the institutions, with the city government, with the, uh, uh, um, um, sorry, uh, with the city government, with the negotiations about using common spaces which should belong to all of us and such, with the uh, negotiations between uh, art institutions, sponsors, and uh, such thing. Um, so, um, bringing all these actors in the very process of production and not just in the process uh, of uh, art distribution opens up, and uh, mediation, opens up the possibility for art to start recognizing its po uh, political potentials, which lies um, in recognizing uh, the relativity, actually, of this uh, privileged position. This means bringing focus on the production and distribution process in the art field, uh, 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 which will bring us to recognize the false homogeneity which hides the class relations uh, within it and consequently outside of uh, the uh, art sphere. Thank you.